This is CPM Calculus Chapter 5, Number 31. Here we're asked to graph the, af the absolute value of x plus 1 plus the absolute value of x minus 2. And then answer for what value of x does y achieve its minimum value. Also, what characteristic of this function makes the answer to this question unusual? Alright, so our calculator will allow us to graph this immediately. Right? We can go ahead and graph this. But instead of just jumping in and graphing it, I want to go ahead and <clears throat> I want to go ahead and graph it by first figuring out what it is algebraically. Okay, so functions that have absolute values, we can go ahead and break them up into um, piecewise defined functions. For example, y is equal to the absolute value of x. We know that that means it's equal to x when x is greater than 0 and negative x when x is less than or equal to 0. Either one could be or equal so you can choose one because when it's equal to 0 negative 0 and 0 are the same. Okay so this is just a quick example of a piecewise defined function. Okay so if we're to look at this right well, I can say that y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. Well, as a piecewise function, that's defined to be x plus 1, right, positive, when x is greater than negative 1, right? As long as x is greater than negative 1, it's just x plus 1. And otherwise, it's going to be negative of x plus 1 when x is less than negative 1 and make one of these or equal. Okay, One of them has to be or equal to have it um, a continuous function. Anyway, so this is how we can break up the function um, into two pieces. And so I'm going to call that y sub 1. And y sub 2 is going to be defined as x minus 2 absolute value, which the two pieces to make this one up are x minus 2 and negative x minus 2. And it changes over when x has to be greater than or equal to 2 and this one changes over when x is less than 2 alright so the funny thing happens is when we're adding these two together right we have y is equal to absolute value of x plus 1 plus absolute value of x minus 2 right that's what we're given and we want to graph well this one has three different regions okay let me just quickly sketch the graphs um, we know this one right here, y sub 1, is just looking at negative 1. It's something like this, right? y sub 2 changes over at 2, something like this, okay? So when we're adding them together, um, there's this one region. Let me go ahead and um, actually draw these on the same plot. Right? So something like that. Anyway, so there's one region between negative 1 and 2 where um, like we have to change 1 to be positive and 1 to be negative. So what that's going to look like is we have three pieces then for when we're adding these two together. We have one um, all the way over here, right, to the left of negative 1. So this is for x is less than negative 1, right? For x is less than negative 1, we have negative x plus 1. And x is less than negative 1 for this one too, so we have plus negative x minus 2. Okay? In between, oops, in between negative 1 and 2, we have this region where we're using um, the positive value for x plus 1 and the negative value for x minus 2. So this is going to be x plus 1 plus negative x minus 2 and this is for the region x is between negative 1 and 2. And finally we have the region where they're both positive. Well they're always always positive but this is canceling it out to make it positive. Um, plus x minus 2, and this is for the region x is greater than 2. So we can redefine y to be a 
piecewise defined function. Okay. Because why did I do that? Well, now it's going to be easy to graph. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Well, negative, let's distribute that negative. So it's going to be plus, well, I'm going to use another color, plus negative, negative, plus negative, negative, or plus negative, positive. So this is going to be negative 2x, negative 1, and positive 2, plus 1, right? Or x is less than negative 1. This right here. Well, x, well, let's distribute the negative here. x and negative x cancel out. And we're just left with 1 and 2. So this is 3 for negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Simplifying this, it's 2x minus 1 for x is greater than 2. So now we can graph this, right? We can graph this. We have a region three regions to look at, negative one, um, and two here. So let's go ahead and graph it for x is less than negative one, that means to the left here, right? Our graph is going to be negative two x plus one. Okay, so it has a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of one. So if it did cross, um, it would look, so oh, let me draw a little better, it would look at, like something like this, okay? All right. As a slope of negative 2, sorry, I made it, I just drew it the opposite. It's going to look something like this. Let me draw two points here, um, like this, okay? But we know it's only defined to the left, this point, right? So actually, it's going to cross over right here. And at negative 1, we're going to have the value of um, negative 1 times um, negative 2 becomes positive 2 plus 1 becomes 3. So at negative 1, we're going to be at the value of 3, right? It's an open circle going up to the up to the left. So this is what the graph looks like. 3 between negative 1 and 2. So negative 1 to 2, we know the value is 3. Closed circle. Closed circle here touches that one, makes it continuous. Then to the right of 2, it is 2x minus 1. So it has a slope of 2. Going up, and when you plug in 2 in there, it's 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, so it's continuous with this. It's like this. So this right here is the graph. So the question asked us to graph it and then says, where does it achieve, where does it achieve its minimum value? What value of x? Okay. And also, what characteristic of this function makes it unusual? The answer is unusual. Well, the answer is unusual because what is the minimum value? Well, the minimum value is um, 3 right here, right? The y value is 3, but it's 3 for what x values? For a range of x values, right? It's 3 from negative 1 all the way to 2, right? This whole part right here is the minimum values okay so the answer here is the x values are the range from negative one and two negative one to two so it's an interval right or a range same thing and why is it unusual well this is unusual because um, normally graphs don't have a horizontal segment so this graph has a horizontal right it's just a flat segment at its minimum. All right, so let's go ahead and use our calculators now to just graph this so we can verify. Um, I'm going to turn on my calculator, go to y equals, clear anything in there, and I'm going to go to catalog to get absolute value, which is at the very top. So I'm going to even push A to go to the top. ABS, right, that's absolute value. And remember, the Equation is absolute value of x plus 1, x plus 1, plus, and I'm going to go back to catalog to get the absolute value of x minus 2, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and graph this, and here we have it, just like we've seen, right? In fact, 
if you could use your calculator to do this always, you should just be able to jump from the graph in your calculator to see that it has minimum values between this range and you could trace the graph to see this range is the y value is 3 and it goes from negative 1 to 2 and that there's a horizontal segment. Alright, so that's going to end for us CPM Calculus Chapter 5, Number 31.